Today, I'm gonna be meeting up with a good friend of mine, David Lieb, he's a professional mountain biker, and he just got a new set of tires for his Mercedes Sprinter. And so we're gonna be doing the chalk test and also calculating out, uh, based on weight ratio, what his tire pressure should be, and then we'll also be doing a chalk test on my Super Duty to see if my current tire pressure is what it should be based on the unloaded weight of my truck. Also, it's important to note that I did take my truck to a cat scale recently and I got it weighed and the truck came in unloaded with the cap on at about 7,800 pounds. So 7,880 was the final total. And so that's a lot underneath what my actual door sticker is, which is 10,000 pounds. And so based on some of the comments I got in my lurch video, there were a couple folks saying that, you know, if you don't run your tires at the door sticker, it causes death wobble or your tires will wear poorly. And this video is to kind of dispel those because at the end of the day, the best way to get good tire wear is to set your pressure as a ratio of the load you're carrying so you get even wear across the entire surface. So we're gonna show that today on David's van with the chalk test. Hey, my name is David Lieb. I'm a professional mountain bike rider for five years now. A lot of my job depends on having a reliable vehicle to get to the mountain bike spots out west. I have my sprinter here, and today we're gonna make sure that I have the correct tire pressure for driving around with the specific weight of my van. So the chalk test with tires. This is where you take a piece of chalk and you rub a line of chalk across the entire top of your tire. Now ideally, in order to get even wear across your tread blocks, you want the chalk that you rub on the top of your tire after you drive to be worn off or you want to see wear in the chalk all the way across the tire. If you don't see wear all the way across the top, now if you're running like door sticker and your vehicle's unloaded, chances are the chalk at the edges won't be worn off, the chalk at the center will, and that's gonna lead to uneven wear. So when I first got my truck, I had no idea what I was doing and I was running door sticker even when it was an unloaded pickup truck. And especially in the rear, my tires wore a bald patch on top but still had tread on the edges. And that uneven wear was caused by the fact that I had overinflated my tires based on the load that I was carrying. So when you're gonna do a chalk test, you're basically gonna get a piece of chalk like this and David's tires were a little bit wet. So basically we're just trying to get, oh, and the chalk broke. Thanks chalk. We're just trying to get a line across his tires and I'm trying to get markings so you can basically see where the chalk is. Yeah, the door sticker on the Sprinter is pretty crazy. It's uh, cold tire pressure. We have 46 PSI front and 70 PSI rear. So as you can see with how the chalk wore, I mean, you can barely see it anymore, but there's kind of a faint pink hue there where the red chalk was. I'm running 46 front cold, which actually translates to about 49 to 50 once I'm on the highway. The, my real concern for this experiment is the rear. I felt like 70 PSI cold was just way too high for the rear and it was making for a super harsh ride. So I've actually been slowly dropping pressures down until I felt like they were okay. And I just wanna see if this experiment confirms my suspicion that I'm now I'm running, now I'm running about 55 cold rear and that seems to feel a lot better, but maybe I can even go lower. This is the driver's side rear tire. Uh, this is the one that we're really testing to see how the wear is with this new tire pressure. So again, door sticker, cold inflate, which means you know before the tires are up to temperature or hot because they've been on the highway, uh, the cold inflate for this is 70, and then David was having the tires spin up to like 75 PSI. So we're going to again do the chalk test. I'm going to draw chalk onto these tread blocks across the middle of the tire all the way to the other side. And so the whole idea of this is like you want the whole tire touching the ground because you want to get full contact across the top of the tire. That's how the tire was designed to operate, not to have like this part of the tire on the ground and the rest of this stuff levitating over the road. You're missing out on a whole bunch of contact patch by not having the tire fully in contact with the road, which can result in poor handling, it can result in poor braking distances. Like, it's just not how the tire was designed to function. If we need to go lower, that means it would be 
less chalk in the middle, more chalk on the sides. If you go too low. So like if if you if you do this incorrectly, that's that's where you get like poor wear in the center and that's an indicator of under like underinflated tires. Okay. So if you underinflate your tires, you won't get wear in the center, you'll get wear on the sides. What we're trying to do is find that sweet spot where you get even wear across the entire top. Right. And right now it seems like that's happening cuz if you even look at these side tread box, they have the same kind of amount of wear on the center. Now what I would do is if you think like right now it looks like this is all kind of wearing, like all the chalk is wearing the same amount. You could try going down five PSI okay, and seeing what happens. Like see how the wear changes. Cause you can kind of tell again, even without chalk. But the key here is all this chalk got smudged and wore off all whole way across. So at a baseline now, you know that 55, you're getting reasonable wear out of your tires. My build was 6,800 pounds without my like traveling gear in it. So I'm guessing that it's probably about 7,500 now that I have it fully loaded with bikes, riding gear, food, all the stuff you need. Right. So yeah. Just and you also, right now, you don't have the pit bike on the back, which is what, another 160, 160 plus pounds? the rack, 200. Plus it has all the leverage that it's pulling out. So I would say fully loaded, 55 rear is probably a good place to yeah. be at. When, so. I, when I got these tires put on, the shop just followed the door sticker as they should. Um, and it felt like 70 PSI as I was driving around unloaded. It was just punishing my vehicle. Like I could feel it all the way through like my walls and I could just hear the torture that it was going through. So <laughs> I started dropping it down and so far I feel like 55 has been kind of the sweet spot, although I haven't tried lower yet. So I'm excited to keep playing around with it and yeah, stoked on how this test has kind of shown me that I'm in the right ballpark and uh, yeah, I think we're yeah. moving in the right direction. Yeah, you're in range, which is sick to see and it'll definitely help preserve the life of your tires and like your suspension stuff. I'm, we're gonna drive around back and I'll probably take out my pump and make sure all the tires have 45 exactly and then we'll do the chalk test on my tires, which are a lot larger than David's. I have 35, 1250s. And so we're gonna see if me running 45 PSI is actually legit and if I, um, <laughs> I'm doing the right thing or if I need to also lower my pressure. And uh, I've tested this out for quite a while. I've done a chalk test before and I, I kind of know what I'm gonna get. Um, I have basically experienced that the 45 PSI isn't quite low enough to get totally even wear. It's kind of towards the top end of being almost still overinflated, but I didn't want to lose too much fuel economy and I, I didn't like how mushy 40 PSI felt, so I decided to keep it at 45. But just for the sake of experimentation, we're going to run the chalk test on my vehicle and we're going to see what it comes out to and you know we'll see how maybe off I am and how much I need to either reduce or increase. You'll see here. Um, I'll cover up my VIN, but uh, you can see that the gross vehicle weight rating is 4,536 kilograms or 10,000 pounds. The front tires are supposed to be inflated to 60 PSI cold. So that means, you know, before you drive it. And then the rears are supposed to be 75. I have lowered my pressure to 45 front and 45 rear, and I found that gives me the best ride. I don't sacrifice too much of the handling control and stuff. So we're gonna rub some chalk on my wheels and, or on my tires, excuse me, and whoa. And thankfully my tires are dry. Yes, my tires are cupped because the last time I waited a little bit too long to rotate them, sue me, but they get the job done for now. I'm gonna get them even back out, hopefully. Okay, 45 PSI, look at the chalk. You can see what it was before, but you notice I got pretty even wear across the top of this, right? Aside from the cupping, yes, I know it's cupped. Chalk is gone for the most part. You can see inside in a couple of these tread blocks, not totally gone, but like for the most part gone. If we come back here, you will see from this, I am still not running low enough pressures. This is 45 PSI rear, and you can see the chalk in the center 
wore off, the chalk on the side did not. So that means that I could technically go even lower than 45 PSI. Like I could probably run my rear at like 40 PSI because I'm not getting even wear across these tires. And honestly, I might just drop my pressure now that I know that because it's not helping because I need these knobs to wear. And you can even see these knobs on the side are taller than some of these knobs in the center. And you want even flat wear across the top. But again, it's just these three rows, one, two, three, that are getting all the wear when the tires are in the back. It's not the front. Whereas the front, which has the weight of the motor and a bunch of other weight at 45 PSI is getting even wear across the entire tire. I'm gonna put this caveat in here. It goes without saying, but when you are towing, if you are putting a heavy trailer or if you know that your van in this case is loaded to close to the gross vehicle weight max or you know what the weight is, you need to make sure that you're increasing your tire pressure because you want the tire pressure to increase as a ratio of the weight that you're carrying in the vehicle. Unless someone already took my spot. <laughs> Spooky. At least it's just your van. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I just dropped my tire pressure in the rear down based on the chalk test results we got. Based on what we saw with David's van, the Sprinter at 55 PSI in the rear instead of 70. So you're going like 15 under where the door sticker is. When it's you know not fully loaded, actually works pretty well to get your tires wearing correctly. Now, you kind of said you're gonna keep playing with it a little bit, maybe try to go up five PSI, mm -hmm. maybe down five PSI, see how the tires wear, see like what yeah. everything's doing. So it seems to be like 55 with my current, like I'm like half loaded. I'm loaded, but not to the max. Right. I think if I was daily driving it at home, without any of my travel gear in it, it would be like really uh, 40, uh, maybe 45 ish. Would yeah. Almost like same as like the front, like you could do 46 yeah, front, 46 for rear. Sure. Yeah. Anyway, we appreciate you checking out this video. Definitely go check out David's channel. He is doing a series on his van build through like every step, which is incredible. And he also has a bunch of really cool riding videos. So if you're into uh, mountain biking, traveling, or large diesel vehicles, AKA vans, definitely check out his channel. I'll have a link to that below and in the video. And hope to see you next time here on Power Stroke Maintenance. Cheers.